First of all, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Before I begin, I want to say that Bart's entire thoughts and prayers are with our neighbors to the north in Napa for the long journey that they will have to undertake to help rebuild their lives. It's going to be a long journey and uh, anything we can do here at BART to help them with that journey, uh, we are with. So our thoughts and prayers to our neighbors from the north. Yesterday, the Bay Area experienced the largest earthquake since the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. And yet with BART, the catchphrase was business as usual. Business as usual, not a change from any other day because it was business as usual. And why was it business as usual? Because Bart does, Bart thinks about things that aren't sexy every day, like earthquake. That's all we think about. How do we make our system even seismically more safe? We did. And the result was yesterday, we were able to open all our trains and operate as if nothing had happened. Unlike some others who need some assistance down the road, which we'll help, more than glad to help provide advice on, we operated and it was business as usual. And part of that reason was BART embarked upon a 10-year safety program for earthquake safety 10 years ago. We went to the voters of the Bay Area and we said, you know what, we need to upgrade our system Give us a billion dollars. We'll take care of it and we'll make it the most seismically safe system in the country. We are still moving on forward with that. But one of the great things that we were able to do with these resources and with this thinking, as the future speaker will say in a minute, Director McPartland, we were able to partner with UC Berkeley and develop an early earthquake detection system, which allows us to get a little bit of an advance warning, and they'll talk about this more in a second. But that, to me, is a milestone. And when we say business as usual, what we mean, we think it's business as usual, but these are the things that BART does. Core transportation issues. A lot of media coverage on a lot of issues, which BART is part of. But earthquake safety, passenger comfort, running the system efficiently, that's BART's core business. And I think yesterday was a magnificent indication of the dividend that we are giving the voters of the Bay Area when they gave us that billion dollars over 10 years ago. So we're here very much to say thank you, Bay Area, for that wonderful vote of confidence with the billion dollars. But you can see the results in yesterday. It was business as usual. So thank you very much for coming. I now have the pleasure of introducing a good friend and an old colleague, Director John McPartland from the Bar Board. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, sometime after, wait on the sound, sometime after three o'clock in the morning yesterday, there was a 6.0 earthquake in the Napa area which resulted in a seismic, uh, <laughs> which ended up in earthquake uh, warning systems or sensors kicking off all over the place. I will end up telling you that BART ended up receiving those signals and it operated exactly as advertised. Specifically, we ended up getting the signal that came in through Cal with the 10 second lead time that and then activated our system when the system uh, when the earthquake was felt by the sensors that we have on the BART system, and we have 12 of our own, nothing happened. There was no activation. And the reason is that the threshold that we have set for a seismic event in BART is going to be 3.5. And it didn't shake that much here. Had that been a earthquake similar to the Loma Prieta earthquake, there would have been potentially a lot more damage, and that lead time would have, would have been critical. With a 10 second lead time, we would have the ability to stop trains that are going 30 miles an hour. A train that is going 70 miles an hour will be able to reduce its speed down to 40 miles an hour. That is crucial because although we are spending a billion dollars for earthquake retrofit, 
It's not going to do the patrons too, many go too much good or the transportation system very much good if we end up derailing trains all over the place. And so what, by partnering with Cal and being able to get that early warning, it provides us that extra lead time to allow us to be able to slow those trains down, prevent the injuries, prevent the derailments, keep our system whole and stay operational in a very critical post-earthquake time. At this time, the guy who will, the person that will be able to provide you with some more detailed information on that is from Cal, and that's going to be Professor Richard Allen. Richard? Thanks, Joe. Thank you. So uh, my name is Richard Allen. I'm the director of the Berkeley Seismological Laboratory. Um, and as you're probably all aware at this point, we have a demonstration earthquake early warning system that we've been testing here in California since 2012. Uh, yesterday at 3.20 in the morning when we had this magnitude 6 earthquake, the system accurately detected the earthquake, it assessed the size of the earthquake, and it pushed out a warning to our group of test users. About 150 users get this warning right now. One of them, I'm very pleased to say, is Bart, who partnered with us early in the project to help us figure out how best to develop the system and to push the warnings out. And as you've just heard from the two directors, they get this warning and they can now slow and stop the trains, thereby potentially reducing the impacts of future earthquakes. So this was great. This was a great success for us, the fact that the system worked. It's certainly not the first. In recent LA earthquakes, we also detected the earthquakes and we pushed out warnings. So the question, of course, that everybody is asking, why is it BART and other groups that are getting alerts? Why is everybody else not getting the alerts? And this is a great question that we should be addressing to our legislators. We've proved the technical capabilities. The fact that BART has implemented this system and it's working successfully clearly demonstrates that the technology works. People want this. We just need the necessary investment to roll this out, complete shake alert, and have a public earthquake early warning system. Thank you very much. How important is this? So I guess I can take questions now and then... Right. Um, and then we can do the help. We'll just supplement. Sure. Okay. Sure. Professor, just how important is this? We know it's in Japan. We know it saved lives there in the Tohoku quake. Uh, how important is this for us here? We right. got str a strong case. Yeah, I think that this is a critical that we need to have this to reduce the impacts of future earthquakes. My colleagues here from BART can tell you why they are concerned about the impacts of earthquakes on BART trains. It's a very clear case. I'll let John make that in a moment. And so they want to slow and stop the train so that they can prevent these derailments. People who are having surgery, they want their eye surgeon to lift that scalpel off their eyeball before the shaking starts. As individuals, a few seconds warning means that you can take cover, duck, cover and hold on under a sturdy table. And when you look at the injuries that uh, occurred yesterday in the Napa earthquake, many of those could be prevented by getting a few seconds warning so you can get out of harm's way. This is a critical need here in earthquake country. We need the investment, we need a public system now. Could you, uh, does, could does, you go through the system just tell us a little bit about how it works? We have to get extremely you know, technically detailed, but just a basic you know, public knowledge. So the way that earthquake early warning works is that we have an array of sensors out across California. Right now we have about 300 seismic sensors that stream their data into the system. Um, the closest sensors to the epicenter, they detect the very small energy that radiates initially, and then they assess the amplitude of the ground shaking that's going to follow. So you can then push that warning out to people across the zone that's going to experience strong shaking before the shaking actually starts. And then what does BART do once they have that? I should I'll pass that over to my colleagues. Okay, question again? What when, you've been, yeah, well, when you've been warned, what, what does BART do? Once, we've been, once uh, BART has been warned, it's an automatic slowdown on the trains at two miles per hour per second. And then the train operators will be notified by central, uh, central communications in order to uh, increase that deceleration rate to three miles per hour per second. That's how we end up coming up. And that will end up taking a, a matter of uh, perhaps two to three seconds from uh, the two second per minute, two second, two miles per hour per second to the three miles per hour per second. That's how we ended up coming up with a figure that had the system been running and the trains had been stopped by Central, that we could have taken a train uh, moving at 30 miles an hour and bring it to a complete halt. That's crucial, and when you think about it from the life-saving standpoint, 
Uh, the best illustration is the accident that they had in, in I believe, uh, either December or January, uh, where we had a derailment of a train in New York that had 100 people on it. Two to three people died. 13 people were injured critical. 60 people were uh, injured that had to be treated. There were only 100 people on the train. During peak commute, we have 100 people per car. Multiply that by the number of trains that we have with 10 car trains, and that gets to be an astronomical figure. So to answer your question and uh, what, uh, what difference does it make or how important it is, it's going to be life-saving. And don't forget, when we have that earthquake, trying to deal with just one of those trains with 100 people times 10 being derailed is going to end up tying up resources from the police, from the law enforcement and fire service and public safety that really don't have those resources available. Okay? Yeah, and I think the other thing is uh, it shows that BART is ahead of the curve on seismic safety. The 15 seconds that he talked to you about doesn't only save lives, it saves property. So the residents of the Bay Area should figure out we are doing our job. We are doing our job business as usual. Sorry. Yeah. Question. In a perfect world, um, how would civilians be notified? I know you part has, you're part of the network, but how do civilians, how are civilians to get the The civilians would be notified if we end up going public with a system similar to the way it's been done in Japan, where every person that has a cell phone or has a computer or has any kind of uh, internet uh, connectivity will be getting a notification that will tell them how many seconds will occur before you uh, before the shaking will start. If you're driving, that'll give you a time to slow down. If you're approaching a big bridge, not to go on it. And it goes uh, all the way down to, like uh, Dr. Allen ended up saying, uh, the surgery where the scalpel is about to go into somebody's eyeball. That gave me a shiver when he said that. Uh, and if you're in school, the children will have an opportunity to dock, uh, duck, cover, and hold. And it's crucial. It is going to end up saving a lot of lives from the standpoint of avoiding potential hazards and risks that you would have other been, otherwise been in. Okay? And so, and maybe for Dr. Allen or you, what can people do that? They're frustrated by this and we all want this. Uh, write, write their politicians. Can they donate? What, what can people do to help you? Thank you. Uh, I'll pay you later for that. The, no, I want that. Uh, I it's a, it's a function of prioritizing and budget. Right now, in order to be able to go public with this and complete the system and make it available to the public the way it's uh, being done in Japan and uh, Dr. Allen may end up knowing other countries where it's available as well, we need to have the system live when it needs to be a public, uh, open to the public. Right now it is not. Okay? And that's a function of budgeting and yeah, hammer the legislators. Yeah, can I add a little? Yep. So there are two things that people should do today in order to get earthquake early warning. The first one is to contact your legislators. People always say that, but this is going to really make a difference. Already we are very close to getting funding in Sacramento at the state level to build an early warning system. There's a real push um, already underway in Washington, D.C., Funding was actually appropriated as part of the appropriation lang language for early warning, but we haven't quite gone that last step. The dollars have not actually shown up. So actually talking to your legislators right now could make a real difference. The second thing that people can do is that there is a hope that the water bond measure that will be on the ballot this fall can also be used to build an earthquake early warning system. This is key in order to help protect California's water resources, but that same earthquake early warning system will provide everybody in California um, with a benefit. So you get a two for one. When you vote for the water bond, you get better water services and you get earthquake early warning as well. So is this money, all this, all this money need to come from the state or the federal government or? Would it come through subscriptions from individuals or from agencies like BART? How would that work? So the way that, that we, the California Integrated Seismic Network, the universities and the USGS partners that run all of the seismic networks in the state, envision this working is a public-private partnership. We already have that public-private partnership with groups who are testing the early warning system. 
the, the networks that we already have out that are run by the universities and the USGS, they can provide the kernel of the alert. And we want the public sector to then take that kernel of an alert and push it out to everybody in every which way that they can come up with. There will be a plethora of apps that you can download onto your cell phone. There will be a plethora of devices you can buy, like a smoke detector. We all put smoke detectors in our houses. You'll be able to buy your own earthquake early warning device that goes into, into your homes. And so in that way, this is a true partnership between the public sector, the private sector, to bring the best possible warnings to people in the future. Yep. And Bart is just very happy to have uh, my, uh, my alma mater, UC Berkeley, working on this. So thank you very much. Yeah, and one, one, this might be a retrofitting question uh, for your engineers, but you know, kind of here everyone's worst nightmare is being in the tube during the earthquake. But I've heard some things about the retrofitting has been uh, so massively done there that might actually be one of the safest places to be on bar. Or well, in okay, fact, we've got uh, an expert that can end up right. answering to that, but um, uh, I'm going to ask him to uh, stand by and uh, throw something at me if I say something wrong. Uh, prior to becoming a director, I worked in the safety department and I was very close to what was going on with earthquakes. Uh, as a result of that, I have always kept very close track on it. During an earthquake, if there's a major earthquake in the Bay Area, the two places that I would love to be able to be in a BART train would be on the Dublin grade because it's at, at grade level or at the Trans Bay 2. That thing is just as solid as you can get from one end to the other. So it is very safe. And oh, by the way, uh, if you derail a train on the Dublin grade, you have to deal with that. If uh, you're in an underground portion, it doesn't have a lot of wiggle room. So uh, come to think of it, I'd rather be in the, in the tube than any place else. Okay. Right? John, let me, right? okay, I'm gonna bring in Tom Horton. Tom Horton is the uh, program manager for earthquake safety. He can tell you what we've actually done to the tube and what work remains. So come on in, Tom. So far on the Trans Bay tube, we have upgraded the uh, uh, seismic flexible joints on the San Francisco end, which is not far from where we're standing right now. We've also upgraded the systems within the tube, like fire water and uh, electrical and so forth. And we've done some work on the Oakland end in the Port of Oakland to retrofit the buildings and the tube area over there. Remaining to be done is installation of a uh, liner designed to control leakage, which would happen in a very, very large earthquake. We're designing for something that is extremely rare. And uh, in that situation, uh, you may get cracks in the tube, which could cause leakage. And we'll be putting a liner on the inside of the tunnel to control that leakage and be able to pump it out uh, using our pumping system. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Any other questions? What was the title? Tom Horton, Program Manager, Earthquake Safety.